household you maintain. And that, I think, should be, in some way or other, be, be an institutionalized mechanism. It's something that is established. Uh, and whether that is... The PCIJ, I know for a fact, the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism, did this on account of just their work for investigative re reporting. But why does it have to be like that, as if they were, you know, stalking <laughs> politicians in that sense, or uh, when, it, it, when, when it can really be something people as openly <coughs> the tip of your fingertips could, could access, could see. Um, so yeah, I'd love, I'd, that would be great if you know the, anyone comes down to Mindanao, anyone sees what, what any of us have or are doing, uh, our districts, uh, our businesses, our families' uh, involvements here or there, things like that. Well, the uh, <coughs> Lord blessed me with a very good practice. My wife is also a physician. I'm a gastroenterologist. My wife is a pulmonologist. We continue to own and operate a medical clinic in Oklahoma. And I mean, I, I live a simple lifestyle. I hardly spend on anything. I have a staff of two for this whole campaign, but I'm spending my own money. But I only have one promise to make in this campaign. It's to serve only for one term as a senator. To serve as an example for others that public service is a sacrifice. It is not a means of making a living. Hindi po panghanap buhay ang politika. At kinakailang pakita natin sa pamamagitan ng halimbawa na hindi po tayo nandito para kumita. But having said that, I want you to know that I feel greatly honored to run with people like Congressman Rufi Biason, Congressman Lingona, Congressman Acosta, Yasmin Lau, Risa Ontiveros. I mean, noble, honorable people who have made public service their principal life advocacy. And I don't, I'm not going to blame, for example, Rufi, that his father is an incumbent senator right now and he wants to take over. That's fine with me. But the point is, I can vouch for his integrity and his honesty here. This, this is just my simple expression of showing to everyone else, especially to the overseas Filipino community, that we're here to serve, to give back to the country that gave so much to us that we never for one day forgot what we owe our country and that we left so many poor people behind. And it's our turn to give back to our country that we love deeply. Yes, the issue, this, uh, yeah, T.G. Gingona here, no? The issue is uh, transparency, how will you implement it? And how will you implement it in your own political life? Uh, mabuti na lang merong websites na ngayon because, you know, publishing a newsletter is very, very expensive. So, there is the website, and we should use it to the hilt. Uh, it's free, it's accessible by all. Everything, my, my advocacies, uh, especially, es most especially, the CDF, the pork barrel, the most, uh, the most controversial, <coughs> should be brought, put out in detail. Everything there should, will be there and should be there, everything in detail. Um, and also, even in, in, in the budget, where I'm, I'm proposing, no? that even the SAROs, these are the, um, these are the obligations made by the, the Department of Budget and Management and the NCAs, the Notice of Cash Allocation. Uh, uh, there's so much secrecy in that, that these, these, these SAROs become negotiable instruments. There are brokers who sell it, and uh, it should not be the case, obviously. And they should all be put down in the website, immediately available. So we must use the website on <coughs> the hill. You will do it for yours, if you're elected. Oh, definitely, yes, yes. Definitely. Well, uh, for one, uh, I'd like to support the Freedom of Information Act, which is still pending in Congress. Uh, it will provide a, a tool for the public, media, general public, uh, to, 
gather information about government and uh, hopefully promote transparent, transparency. Um, of course, all the other methods that were mentioned by my colleagues, uh, it's, it's also something that I would, uh, I would implement myself. And we have good laws, actually, that are already in place. We just have to comply with those laws. Um, for example, the filing of SALs, the um, reporting of uh, expenditures as a government official, etc., etc. I will comply with all of those. Plus, reporting other legislation which will enhance uh, transparency in government. One example there is the freedom of information. Um, next, Pucholo. Yes. Uh, good evening once again. I'm Pucholo Gonzalez from Creative Voices. I'm also the founder of one of the biggest youth group called Voice of the Youth Network. I have a TV show for young people and a radio show for uh, the youth. Uh, sir, do you believe in youth vote? And uh, uh, sir, from that, uh, what's your t plans and uh, your programs for young people and what's your take? Uh, present situation of National Youth Commission. Thank you. Well, uh, before uh, answering, uh, please identify yourself because some of the uh, viewers uh, do not know you. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Merrick Acosta again. Um, Pocholo, yes, th thank you for, for pointing these out. Three, no? Uh, from backwards, it's the National Youth Commission and then plans, uh, plans for for young people and your, do you believe in youth vote? In a youth vote, okay. Yes, I believe there is a youth vote. I think, uh, may, I'm not very sure entirely if in 2010 it will be manifest in, a, in the same manner <clears throat> it was in 1992 for Miriam Defensor Santiago's run for the presidency. <coughs> or to a certain extent, Raul Rojo as well. But I, I do believe that it is a youth vote in so far, there is a youth vote in so far as there is a force field, a, a field of energy out there of a restlessness, a sense of wanting to be involved, but at the same time, I look at it as a, I don't know, like a, a it's double-sided, it's double-edged. On one side, there's this, this intense desire, wanting to, to, to be involved, to be part of a larger, the larger life of the nation and, and getting involved with issues. But on the other hand, there's really a deep cynicism. So it, it, it cuts kind of both ways. Now the challenge for 2010 is how, it uppermost in my mind is still whether the, that it's leaning one way or the other. And I think it, it is a tension that we're seeing. There are a lot of volunteerism, uh, volunteer activity and this a lot of this volunteerism effort and spirit that we're seeing especially with the Liberal Party but there's also a lot of that I won't call it apathy there's a lot of this this sense that they have to be assured like this uh, Bicol University student who pointedly asked us in a forum anong garantiya ninyo na hindi nyo kami bibigo in nila kasi palagi naman kayo nangangako mga politiko kapag kampanya tapos bibigo in nyo din kami and so it, it points, I think, to that. Th there is a dilemma amongst the youth. There's a tension. There's a wanting to be involved. But there's also a widespread sense of cynicism. Say, parang lang kayong lahat. So I think that's still the challenge. But yes, the force field is there. Now, whether that translates into the actual vote on May 10 uh, remains to be seen. Second, in terms of programs and plans, well, I, as congressman, I, say, I, I established the Northern Bukidnon Community College primarily. I didn't even have to wait for national government, for funding, for GA, and I didn't have any pork barrel in my last term because I was with Noy Noy Aquino, one of the key endorsers of, of the impeachment against GMA. So, wala tinanggalan ako ng chairmanship, tinanggalan ng uh, mga development funds for the district. But we went ahead with a private-public sort of arrangement to set up a community college for Lumad youth, Lumad, Katutubong Bukidnon, and minority students so that 